The Home Assistant 2025.9 beta release has just dropped. No AI features this time around, but there are some useful upgrades and some tweaks to some currently existing features. Here's a quick overview of the changes. As usual, this is a beta, so some features might change before the release, but usually most of them make it into the release. The automation editor now has a sidebar that pops out when you add triggers, conditions, or actions. The tile card's features capability has gotten some more updates around things like fan direction, date and time setting, and showing power usage. There's another experimental dashboard that covers your entire Home Assistant instance, and the moment we've all been waiting for. You can see the storage breakdown in the Home Assistant settings, finally. So let's go ahead and check these new features out. So as a part of this release, the Automation's Edit page has a new feature that swaps the old drop-down menu for a new pop-out menu instead. So instead of adding each of the Automation's triggers, conditions, or actions, and having that drop-down menu like we used to have in the new release, it has a pop-out menu instead off to the side. This is a better use of people's monitor space and lets you more easily see which part of the automation you're editing. And this is also supported on mobile phones as well. So if you use the Home Assistant Companion app to add or edit automations, and so you can change the size of that pop-up box on your phone by dragging it up and down. And this makes it really easy to change your automations or your scripts on your phone. But another cool feature in this release is that the tile card has had its features capability updated to support more types of displays. Now, if you don't already know what the features capability is for tile cards, that is the little like add-on section that you can add to Home Assistant's tile card when you're editing a dashboard. This allows you to add a limited subset of functionality at the bottom of the card that in some way relates to the entity that the card is controlling. So let's say you have something that uses you know, a lot of power and you want to track the voltage or the wattage or something like that. You can add that as a feature on the bottom of the card. Now in this release, it, only, it will only show 24 hours and it's not user configurable, but it sounded like it could be a future configurable item in the settings somewhere. So be sure to get subscribed so you can stay in the loop on that one. But it would be really cool to see if they allowed a configurability maybe up to seven days or something like that. That would be pretty cool. In addition to the history card, there's a date and time card that lets you set a specific date and or time straight from the tile card instead of having to manually do it via some other method. There are a few others for controlling fans. For example, you control the direction or oscillation. There's also one for any valves, like a water valve. Maybe you have a water main shutoff valve or something that lets you control it. The button feature on tile cards might actually get some use, especially in smart homes with the less technically inclined. It'll be a lot easier for a beginner or a family member just to press a button and have something happen instead of trying to go to the right dashboard page or something like that. Over the past several releases, Home Assistant has been making great strides in usability, making sure that features are easy to use and don't require editing YAML files or running commands if someone doesn't want to. A few releases ago, they added the experimental areas dashboard, which attempted to intelligently gather a bunch of devices from a single room or area and automatically create a dashboard from all those devices. But in this release, they take it up a notch and do the same thing, but for your entire home instead. It will look at your entire home assistant instance and create a dashboard that has all your different rooms, along with groups for all of your lights and other commonly used entity categories. So for example, if you're a beginner and you've bought smart switches instead of smart bulbs, like we talked about in this other video, then when you enable the home dashboard in Home Assistant, you'll be able to see all of your switches in the corresponding rooms. And then if you have any lights added to them, you'll be able to see them under the lights category up at the top. This dashboard is only available manually. So if you want to enable it and play around with it, you can go into your settings and system and then dashboards. And then you'll go to the new dashboard and add the home dashboard that you see there. So I'm looking forward to seeing this one improve because historically dashboards have been kind of the more difficult part of getting started with Home Assistant. And finally, in this release, you can see what different types of storage are being used on your Home Assistant instance. This seems like something that should have been added a long time ago, 
but I'm glad that they're finally getting around to adding it because it's been so annoying to figure out why storage has been filling up. So being able to see the breakdown of the storage on my system by category is seriously amazing. You can see it under settings, system and storage, and then it'll show you the breakdown of what's being used and how much it's using. And in addition to the storage metrics, there's also an analog clock, if you're into that sort of thing. There are only a few new integrations this month, but the one that stood out to me was the Sleep as Android integration. For those who don't know, Sleep as Android tracks your sleep and allows you to set alarms. Unfortunately, the only way to really get it working was through MQTT. Being able to use Sleep as Android directly within Home Assistant is gonna be a game changer for me with regards to my bedtime and morning routine automations. And there's a few noteworthy improvements. So similar to last month, the Real Link integration and the PlayStation Network integration are the main ones that stood out to me in terms of updates. The Real Link integration now has speaking and doorbell volume controls and the PlayStation Network, you can now send notifications directly through Home Assistant. And as always, make sure you check the backwards breaking changes to see if any of those affect you. I wouldn't hesitate on installing the Home Assistant 2025.9 release. Now, if you're a Belkin Wemo device owner, you're gonna wanna keep in mind the January deadline, which is rapidly approaching, for when Belkin shuts down their cloud and their app. I was able to find a way to save many Belkin Wemo devices from being trashed or bricked. And this works without Belkin's cloud or their app and lets you hook that device directly into Home Assistant. So check out this video for steps on how you can do that for your Belkin Wemo devices. And I'll see you in the next one.